So I wanted to talk about Safari extensions because they're uh, a little more applicable to more communities and developers and designers and all that stuff. So if you don't know what a Safari extension is, it's just like any other browser extension. Um, it extends the functionality of the browser as provided from Apple so you can get a toolbar or a contextual menu. I don't have any of those loaded right now. Um, that let you do things and see data. So there's lots of you know Twitter, MLB, whatever. Lots of dev tools too. Um, and the lovely part about Safari extensions is that they are all just HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. So if you can write a basic web page, you can build a Safari extension. Um, the hardest thing I found when doing my first one was just wading through the documentation um, and finding everything that I knew must exist that, and understanding it. So I wanted to go through um, just some basic stuff with the extension builder that you have to do and to make your extensions go. So after you've registered in the Apple Developer Center for a Safari certificate and installed it, you can get into the actual creating of an extension. So in Extension Builder, which is under the Develop menu, um, you can create your first extension. And what that'll do is it'll build you a new directory, which I have here. And it'll put in the initial folder, as well as your info.pos, your settings.pos, so you don't have to create those and deal with the XML. It'll take care of all that for you. And you can manage all that through the Extension Builder. So it asks display name, author, you know, basic information, um, your display version, and then you can create your first bar. So anything you want, such as my request for my bar, or this basic bar here, you create in the extension builder. So you give it a label, choose what HTML file in your directory you want it to be, and reload, and it exists. And so that HTML file exists in the folder that it created. Um, HTML doc type, so it's an HTML5 document. You can give it a title. Um, you know, I copied and pasted this from previously. But you can give it a title, um, link your JavaScript, link your style sheets, and then you're just writing HTML. So what I have here is an input field, a button that activates, that does nothing, and then just another bit of extra content. And that is right here. So the, the really nice thing, because you can use HTML5, is you can use things like placeholder and searching and things like that. And you don't have to write your JavaScript to do that. So you put in your placeholder um, tag in the input, and you've got your placeholder. Um, so I'll show you the, the one I made for Betwix for mine. It's one of my products, and it's just an SMS reminder system. Um, but, so what I did is you have this, and when it first loads, it checks for your credentials. You know, pings the API, do you have your credentials in? Right now it's saying, hey, you, I need your username and password. So one of the other things you can do is you can set in your extension options, and you can set um, all sorts of fields. And so what those are are just settings, settings items. So you can create a settings item, you can do a hidden, a text field, checkbox slider, all of these things. Um, and you can do some really cool stuff and create some really interesting things and get a lot of data from the user and protect it. And all of your files are sandboxed. All of this data is sandboxed. So if you inspect um, a, an actual deployed extension, you can't see the, the code. It is protected, and so you don't have to worry too much about um, being super secure with URLs and such. So, um, so for Betwix for Mind, I have a mobile phone number, and I just have that key as a phone. And then I have password, and you display as password. And now when I fill that out, it actually shows the password. Um, one of the weird things about this, there's no save button. It just does it. And then any time you change this, Safari automatically fires the um, update command. And now this has refreshed itself and says, OK, we can set up your reminder. So what the code for that looks like is right here. Um, what you do is you set up Safari extension settings add event listener. And as soon as that changes, it's going to call the setting changed function, which is right here. And I don't want it to return anything. And then you can set up your JavaScript variables, which are just Safari extension settings phone. And that was that phone field and then the password field. And then I run through the check, you know, did it actually pass um, the API credential test. And then you can use it. So um, I really recommend using a framework for JavaScript. I'm a jQuery fan, but you know, 
anything will work, whatever you like, because everything's available and there's really no restriction on the JavaScript you load because Safari is just treating this as a web page. So you can do pretty much anything you want. Um, and then you don't have to do that. You can do all of your HTTP requests and actually, um, you know, REST requests through Safari. Um, and so when I do that here, I can say have lunch with Scott at 1 p.m. Do it. There it is. So it just said, okay, I'm going to set that reminder for you. Um, and that's just all through the API for that. So for the basic extension, um, essentially all you need is some sort of HTML file that's going to do something. And you can define that to be a bar, you can define it to be a contextual menu, but somewhere your actual code that's going to execute something has to live. Um, and I just made it global.html based on their thing. Um, definitely do a reset. If you don't do a reset, your that extension bar looks really, really bad. Um, you have to set it to look gray, to look like Safari, to have the lines. There's not really a great way to get started with that. So I'd say if you can find an example or if you want mine, I'm happy to send it to you. Find one and start with your basic CSS, um, you know, couple things for your body and all that to actually make it look good because otherwise it's just going to give you a big white um, plane essentially. Um, and then info and settings it creates. And so really there's not a lot to them. It comes down to what can you do but because it's just HTML and CSS and JavaScript, you can take something you've already written, especially a Chrome extension, because they're almost the same thing, dump it in and make it do pretty much whatever you want. So very straightforward. Um, after you've written your code and done all that, you can deploy it. And what you can do is you can build the package, and it will set up the actual if it does it, extension. Um, and then you can save it, and it'll save it as, as a Safari extension file. Um, the other really cool thing that it does that I was surprised it does is it'll look for an update manifest. So I have another file that actually lives on the Twix for my server that's just a simple plist that you actually have to create this. Um, the de developer tools won't do it for you, but you just copy in the same data from there and then put the location of the download. And then anytime you change this string um, and you upload it, when I go into my extensions preferences and check for updates, I guess that's what I'm going to do right now. It's supposed to check for updates. And it will find that update. And then it'll say, hey, you need to update this. And you can do that. And so all you have to do is update that one file. And your extension's updated. Apple takes care of all the rest for you. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to them. It really comes down to what ideas you have. I'd love to hear any questions. I know this is short and sweet, but um, you know, fighting fighting the documentation was probably the hardest thing that I found, and then um, figuring out that you know you get no styling. So anyone? Yes, Scott. So I had to step away for a second, and I'm going to be embarrassed if you already just talked about this. So preluding that, um, what about distributing this if somebody else wants to download and install it? <clears throat> so the way you, Apple wants to host it for you um, unless you're featured in the Safari extension gallery, um, which I wish you luck. I'm sure you can. But um, you apply for that. So it, it, where it lives for me is just in the app. Um, So as a user, I can download it. Right. So what I do is I just put it in in the in your account for um, the twice per mine at the bottom here. You're going to see it, and then I just host that file um, in the same in a separate directory is the that update manifest. So all I have to do is push. So this will download that Safari extension. I see. Um, and then I put that, and it'll actually install it for you too. I already have it in there. But if you download Safari extension files, um, Safari will do it for you right away, and then you can either disable it or change stuff immediately. Um, and what about updates? Sorry. And then what about updates? It'll it'll do automatic updates for you. So that's where um, oh, nice. I don't know why this is working because I just did it ten minutes ago. 
Um, but it will watch for automatic updates based on that plist that you create. So all you do here is if you change the, um, the version string and the bundle version, you're ready to go. And it'll, when Safari pulls later on, it'll say, okay, I'm gonna download the new version, and then you can control that. So, so it's really easy to push updates. Are there any statistics around who's using it? Um, I haven't done a ton of research on it, to be honest. It was, I, I did this just as kind of a fun project. I know that not, not many Betwix for my users are using it, but I also know that based on my analytics, not many Betwix for my users are using Safari. And so I'll, I'm gonna build a Chrome version next, which just changes some of the visuals. Um, but you know, Fire, Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Chrome are definitely the three big ones. And around here, I know a lot of us use Firefox and Chrome. So. How, how much flexibility do you have in sort of the layout and positioning of it? I mean, the one you showed was a was a toolbar. Can you, what other things can you do with a? You can you can do whatever you want, and it'll read CSS for whatever you want. So, um, and you can also inject into the page. So I haven't I haven't done too much with that. But so one of the really popular extensions I know because I was looking at this is something that will hide anything Facebook on any website. So if you don't want to see the like buttons and the social graph and all that stuff, this will look, this knows, okay, the, the developers have said, we know what the Facebook div IDs look like. If we see this, we're just going to inject CSS that says hide it. And so it's really simple, but you get direct access to the document as it's rendered um, before and after. And so that's another option in the extension builder in that you can do, um, injected extension content. So you can run a script before the page loads, run a script after the page loads, and inject a style sheet that can be managed through those things. So you can do some really cool stuff, and if you can figure out how to install it on your buddy's computer, you can cause a lot of mayhem. And they won't probably won't figure out what's going on. Um, but so there's a lot you can do with it that I personally haven't explored. I've seen some really creative stuff, um, and to be honest, I don't think there's a lot of restriction you know, it's, it's pretty easy to, I, I got, when I was building this one, I put myself in a loop at one point and had to force quit because I couldn't, you know, you can't get out of it, so. Yeah? Are you stick, <coughs> sorry, are you restricted in height? Can you double no, the I bar think, size um, if you want? Um, what was the last part? Like, could you double the bar size, height, if you wanted? Yeah, so we can say, um, where are we putting Maybe not. You might be restricted in height. Um, no, but you can do multiple lines. I think that, and again, this could be my reset. I think that what it does is it tries to format your text and content and then not let you have just a ton of empty space. But I, ha I had one at one point that was three lines long of content. Um, and it wasn't having a problem with that. So I don't know if we just do. Yeah, see, it's, and that's because of my reset. It's floating everything and trying to scrunch it up. So, but you're not, I don't think you're restricted. Um, I don't know if you can do, I don't think you can do a sidebar. I think you're limited to the menu bar, and then you can create contextual items. Um, and it actually goes over that, so you can see that in this example here. So you can see the bar, you can eject into the page, and you can do something that's going to happen after you click one of the right click menu items. I saw another hand, but. Clayton, question? Okay. Um. All right, thank you, Jonathan.